Mark's Classic Rock, Q1043. Ken Dash out live, Q1043. We are on Facebook from the Q Studios. Lord have mercy. This is the Blue Room today, baby. We're playing the blues. I have with me oh, Mr. Yeah, Jimmy oh, Vivino, yeah. <laughs> Joe yeah. Lewis Walker, yeah. sitting in the studio because we're doing this amazing show. Greg Williamson, the man who put together God's Love We Deliver, Love Rocks, at B.B. King, September 6th. It's Blues Rock. It's a benefit for the Blues Foundation. It is loaded. What did you say, Jimmy? The boat is full, the right? The boat is really full, and I'm still getting people looking to jump on the boat. This isn't about tickets. This is about players wanting to... Right. Amen. Hey, how come I'm not on that? <laughs> so, so we Jimmy, know so many people. Jimmy's you know? the music director. Here's who he's got so far. Joe Lewis Walker. We got Sam Moore from Sam and Dave. Dion is coming. John Sebastian, Love and Spoonful. Yes. William Bell, Catherine Russell, Shamika Copeland, Ruthie Foster, Scott Sherrard, Bill Sims, Eric Krasnow, Tosh Neal, King Solomon Hicks, and the house band, Just a Bunch of Hacks, you, your brother, Jerry Vivino, Will Lee playing bass, Crispin C.O., Earl Gardner on the horns. Penn, Leon Penn Darvis is playing. Sean Pelton from SNL on the drums. Yeah. That's Danny a lot Lewis, of Danny Lewis. Beth Sussman. It's a lot of firepower well, well, on the stage. Got, you know, uh, what happens is you start as a trio. And, <laughs> and, and, we and it got bigger. And then people just say, and you say, yeah. Uh, uh, and the first people uh, that you talk to are the people that do it. The people that say yes. You know, yeah. Joe is always with first, first call. Uh, you know, and um, now that, you know, anytime I do something, and I, I, when I get a chance, I'd like to have Joe work with Joe. So now, we, we get together. And then uh, we, we're, we're, it's, it's for the Blues Foundation. So the idea, of course, is that the proceeds go to the Blues Foundation. Which is to help indigent musicians, this their families, their musicians. homes. Right. And that's, that's the real deal because you know... We were talking about it earlier. It's it's not even about getting ripped off. These guys built the foundation for all of rock, and so many of them are in assisted living, don't have anything. Nobody's nobody's in their corner, so to speak. Right. No no blues musician really wants those blues. Right. You know, we we kind of, you know, when people have been singing their way out of it, yeah, you know, yeah. just to get themselves back into it in the end. So <laughs> here, Mister Black Italian, the Black Italians yeah. over here. Here we are. A jersey. Hey, hey, I'm the white man in black, and he's the black man in white. Right. So we're, we're here to confuse everybody. Right. You know what? All right, play, play a good rock blues song. Give me some rock blues. Well, you know, Joe, I'm going to defer to you, man. Since okay, well, this is a, a, a song a, 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 a friend of mine did, and, and um, I, I loved his band and still do it. And it's like one sunny day, and it goes, uh...
one morning Gonna be one sunny day Gonna be one sunny day Nice. Beetle cord on the end, by the way. <laughs> right. I wanted to put that beetle cord. We just did. <laughs> Sorry about that last verse, brother. That's okay. You stayed on that one like so, that, and I'm. We did a John but, Lee Hooker one against the four. So <laughs> all the time. Jimmy, what we were talking about just before we started is how every song that we know, every song we play on Q1043, somewhere somehow had its roots. Like the 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 recipe begins somewhere in all this music. When you started playing this song, Joe, start it up, up again. Just play the opening of it. She, she come around here just around midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes farther back to the right. guy Bobby McClure had a song called Help Me, which Aretha Franklin did. Help me. Same chords. Right. You know? So so there's Van Morrison taking that and making it into into Gloria with them. And you guys have seen how many times have we seen the Fab Faux? And they're just amazing musicians. And all these guys. They're great musicians, but Jimmy and the guys are the biggest nerds in the world when it comes to music, and I'm proud to be a member no, of that some school. Of them. You don't know them all. I don't know them all, but you guys are right. Yeah, yeah. But you and Will and, and yeah, Pagano are right cool, up there. But underneath yeah, it, yeah, we all. You know, uh, that's why I could never figure out how how Yui got sued for, or Ghostbusters got sued for. You know. well, well, they sued Ray Parker Jr. Yeah, why did Ray get sued when when that's really Gloria? Why did Van Morrison sue Huey then? <laughs> Who was first? Yeah. You know? Well, it's like yeah. Help Me and uh, Green Onions. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, yeah, that's a big... Yeah, Help so, Me is... Uh, you but it's know, a, Help uh, Me is an E, I think. Yeah. Green Onions is an F. Yeah. <laughs> you got to help me. <laughs> Or how about green onions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You gotta help me get some so, green onions. So Joe Joe Lewis Walker is playing at BB King's tonight. You gotta oh, come right. and check yeah, him tonight. out. Tonight. Jimmy, you're gonna sit in. You this might night, Yeah, okay. Wednesday the twenty sixth. Yeah, we're gonna have some oh, friends. July. We'll have some fun. And, and, and yeah. September sixth, we're gonna have this whiz bang blue show at BB King's, all the benefit. I'm giving away tickets every day this week for the three at three. And you just go to BB King's box office. If there's an empty seat. It's a sin because that's what New York and music in the yeah. blues were all about. We were just talking about where, you know, without this music, there is no Led Zeppelin. There's well, no Yardbirds. And it's a combination, and we always talk about it too because nothing should stand still right. and be a painting, you know, uh, except a painting. Blues music should, should always grow and change. And rhythm and blues and blues are all connected. Uh, the, the rhythm and blues that we love, Sam Moore and, and William Bell, who wrote. You know, you don't miss your water, and 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 uh, everybody loves a winner. But also wrote born under a bad oh, sign, yeah. you know, and and so it was all connected, especially with a label like Stax, right? That had all of this soul music and had Albert King, you know, on, yeah. on their label. And you know, Atlantic had blues artists. The major labels had signed some blues artists when BB King. Came out on ABC, I guess it was, with yeah. uh, Thrill is Gone well, on Dunhill. Or? You know, when I was a kid, we, 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 I, I come from San Francisco, Bay area, and we used to do um, these radio broadcasts. Me and my cousins, we had a band, and we'd do them for our DJ at the time, a guy named Sly Stone. And we all come to the same neighborhood, and Sly would literally have his piano in the studio, and he, he was his own program director, so he would play Stevie Winwood. High Hill Sneakers was a hit, blues hit. And then he would play Mose Allison. Part. Yeah. But then the, the record would go off and Fly would play the piano and start singing Mose. This was before yeah. Family Stone. And so you could do that. But where I've come from, San Francisco, we pretty much invented FM radio. <laughs> you know you know that. So when, when Tom Donahue and those guys wanted to play a song longer than three minutes and, and 20 seconds long or two minutes and six, 60, whatever, that's where we invented it. And one of the first tracks that were played over and over again was... Uh, the Dale Hawkins song that, that Credence did, uh, uh, Susie yeah, yeah. Q. That was a major hit, FM style, because I believe it was seven something minutes long. Right. No, it was longer because Dylan busted wide open with Like a Rolling Stone. Right. Because that's six minutes long, yeah, and they wanted yeah. to what, make it two parts. 
and they refused to yeah. do it. God bless John Hammond. Yeah. And he refused to and do then, it. Hey Jude, seven. It topped it at yeah. seven. We were hey talking Jude about that though. Yeah, yeah. 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 The longest after. single ever, seven minutes. It never yeah, but, but Dylan was the first long really long That's single. That's right. Probably. And then you had to play the whole thing on the radio. Yeah, because look what they you did know? to light my fire. It's, it's, it's seven tragic. minute single. Yeah. <laughs> it's tragic. Well, but, but some you, edits that are just right. so funny yeah. to me. That's one of them. So Joe, if you before, tell the story about going to see the Yardbirds, about Jeff Beck and and Jimmy Page. Well, I, I used to, uh, I went to junior high school uh, around the corner from the original film auditorium. So I, I was in the Fillmore district when Fillmore was like Harlem before the hippies came. Yeah. I was there after the hippies came, but <laughs> I always played the film auditorium. That was where we have our battle of the bands. And, you know, not to, not to say that I've seen the real Temptations there. Little Richard, when he got religion for one day, and his guitar <laughs> player was Jimi Hendrix. That's I took right, my grandmother yeah, yeah. to that show. But anyway, to make a long story short, I was there when all the hippies came and 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 and, and the and the English guys blues bands and and um, we used to go. The Yardbirds were one a staple at the Fillmore, and I see them all the time and loved the group. Always did. Uh, but um, one time Jeff Beck was quitting, and so they had another guitar player there to you know sort of insurance because you know you didn't know. in case he didn't show up. Yeah, in case he didn't, basically because you know it was Jeff Beck. And, and, um, <laughs> and he's in America. So. Um, <laughs> They had this great guitar player, and we're looking, this guy's wearing it out playing the psychedelic Telecaster. And it wasn't until like 30 years later that I found it. That was Jimmy Page. That was basically his first tour of America playing second guitar with the Yardbirds. And sometimes he would play the bass with them, you know, if Jeff was on a guitar. But they, they turned that over to Chris, the other guitar player, who was the utility yeah, man. Yeah, Paul but, uh, that, but when I had seen Jimmy Page um, in, that, in, in that lineup, and then you fast forward to seeing Led Zeppelin on and on and on. I've seen them quite a few times in San Francisco, too. I've seen them in free concert. And I, I, I can respect what Jimmy did with Led Zeppelin, but to me, the Yardbirds were just a little bit more traditional, if you can call it that, doing the rave-ups and all that stuff. Yeah. But, man, I, I just um, was extremely impressed with his guitar plan, you know, because there was no pedals, no anything. Everything came from within him, and, and I, I just um, was really... It, it wasn't like later on when I seen him with Led Zeppelin, because it's hard for one guy to solo all night and not become redundant. You know, uh, it's just hard to do that. Maybe Django Reinhardt, maybe George Benson, you know, maybe a few people. But uh, I, I respected him and, and didn't get to see him. And then I, I think I met him once with Albert King one night. And uh, he's just a extra, a very inventive guitar player. I'll put it like that. Right. You know, you, you really, you, he thinks... He reminds me of someone like Otis Rush. He thinks about what he's going to play. Some guys just wing it all the time. I got the feeling you can listen to Stairway to Heaven where he builds this whole guitar crescendo. And, you know, the guitar is a limited in instrument, you know, and for him to build the 12-string with this with that, it was just extremely... Well, he's an arranger. Like, yeah. yeah. Like he's as good an arranger and, on guitars as there is. And, you know? and to be a studio rat like that and to make the guitar, you know, to know that, that there's... Between, under everything is acoustic guitars, you know. And there's a saying in this business, if the song don't sound good on the acoustic guitar, you know, then, then it's like, we're going to fix it in the mix. Well, okay, great. You know, but if it sounds great on acoustic guitar and the voices sound good, it's going to sound doubly as good in the studio. Hey, you want, could you play it a little, like, blues, a little uh, Yardbird-ish Led Zeppelin blues of what they did. Place the original from something that, that yeah. came from. I got a good one. I got one. Hey. Okay, yeah. Okay. You got one? Because here's one. Version and what tiny yeah. I'm at a team in a dream, but then baby, that got the conch and don't you know that's the real that train cup. That's there. the real train yeah. cup. It's so yeah. funky, it is way funky. Yeah, it's like it. and that train kept rolling all night. Yeah, it's long. got that rockabilly but, yeah, swing but against the What the yardbirds yeah. did with it was extremely cool. It's like when they go to the four, <laughs> it's so it's so hokey, <laughs> but it works for guitars because you're not you don't have a fixed instrument like a piano or a right. keyboard to worry about. Yeah, you know? and then Aerosmith is you know the version that a lot of people know. Sure, that, they did, yeah, they did a great job with it. Well, I remember the great thing about the Paul Burleson thing was that uh, playing the yeah, outside. Yeah, 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 he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but who was the tiny, tiny Bradshaw that, that he originally did? That's the real, that's the swinging one. Yeah, th and the, that's the, the rockabilly one though. Is yeah. a combination of both of those. Oh yeah, well it's yeah. It's, yeah. You, yeah. 
You know, only, only in America do you get that juxtaposition like Jimmy was talking about, Stack Studios. Okay, here's Stack Studios. Two white, two black. Booker T, Al Jackson, Doug Dunn, Steve Cropper. Right. You get, uh, okay, so they're tantamount to soul music. Okay, on the other coast you have the Snake Pit with the Motown band. Right. Half you could just say half Italian, half black, yeah. half everything. Yeah. Right. Then you say you go to Muscle Shows, which is the total outlier. I know because I recorded an album. You have the best, some of the best black music known to mankind. Aretha Flank and R E S B C T T, the Rolling Stones, uh, 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 all that stuff. That's most of shows band. Yeah, and right. and all, all of that like things you wouldn't even respect, you know, by yeah. Aretha. Yeah, uh, uh, um, Land of a Thousand Dances. Twenty year old Wilson Roger Pickett. Hawkins yeah. on drums. What a yeah. perfect song. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, my favorite one was uh, uh, Wilson Pickett. Everybody. Yeah. And also uh, that's yeah. all white band. That's most <laughs> shows band. So Bucky in America, too, you get yeah. that juxtaposition. I always love to say you had Chuck Berry, who. Wanted to play country and western. He he couldn't play blues like Money Nim, so he made a country and western out of red. Right. Okay. He went to the club. He was there to play, and they told him the club, "No, nah, boy, you ain't the Chuck Berry we got here." <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he couldn't play country western because of the sign of the times. On the other hand, you had Scotty Moore and Carl Perkins wanting to play blues, but the blues guys was playing it a little bit more. Stronger, they didn't want to play traditional country, so they invented rockabilly. Only in America could you get Chuck Berry inventing rock and roll. I'm sorry, all those out there. Yeah, yeah, no, everybody's Chuck got Berry an was the king of we, rock. We, and we, roll. I, 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 no, I, no I, arguments I, I, in this know, room. No, I, I really do give that to Lewis Jordan because Chuck yeah, Berry. Yeah, but but, but okay. Chuck Berry with guitars. Okay, yeah, that's but, but, what makes it rock and roll. Okay, Louis Jordan was to a specific small amount of people. Yeah, Chuck Berry brought it to the world, inspired the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, with the guitar. Marvel, that's with why. the guitar, uh, and right? That's the country part of it, and the showmanship. Yeah, and right. The showmanship. Right. Yeah. Okay. And speaking to teenagers. And speaking to teenagers. As, as an adult yeah. who is, you know, well, 15 years older, who's you know, 30 years weird. old. He just died and he wasn't an adult But, but most of those guys <laughs> weren't, weren't really that old. It, it's just amazing when you think about it yeah. that those guys, mostly everybody was young then. You know, I mean, there really was no really old guys. But, but when you're 28 and you're writing Ring, Ring, Goes the Bell... You know, I mean, talk about channeling what teenage rock and roll is supposed to be. It was a perfect confluence, like as the Beatles were a perfect bring together. So here's Alan Freed playing rock and roll, Chuck Berry writing teenage music. It's the devil's music. Are these little white kids well, are suddenly a feeling a backbeat and hearing a groove? You know, the Stones were the Stones, and we talk about blues. Let's really talk about the Rolling Stones. You got because, to, because the Beatles took every record they got their hands on in Liverpool, which is way different than getting records in London. Sure, yeah. right. So everything they got in Liverpool, you know, they they channeled into what became their club act. And they worked and worked. They put in the 10,000 hours or whatever. They put in the work as a band that was just out to work and make money playing music and to play rock and roll. And the Stones were dedicated to the blues. They weren't working at all. Like, well, they, they, were, they were the original blues brothers. They, they were was the on original. a mission. They yeah, was on and a mission. you know, the Beatles, yeah, whatever records they got a hold of, and some blues records, mostly, though, Motown, Marvelettes, you know. Uh, 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 what's Vocal it? groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and money, you know. Yeah, they got those. They put them all on guitars. Yeah. All those piano parts, all those things, they put them on guitars. And that's what made it rock and roll. You know, it was money was and, and even taking the Isley Brothers song yeah. and ripping it up the way they did. Yeah. They're throwing back Americans music. We all know this. This is an old right. story. Throwing it back in our faces because yeah. we're not buying it. Right. Yeah. So the Stones were doing it with blues, which was even more yeah. difficult. And I mean, they were getting their hands on Howlin' Wolf records, Muddy Waters records, Jimmy Reed mm -hmm. records. Slim Harpo well, records. What, what Brian yeah. Jones' name was Elmo Lewis. Elmo right. Lewis, yeah. Elmo Lewis, first yeah. cat playing slide guitar, pretty much. Right. And then you we're going to find out all them cats, and you're back to talking about mm. rhythm sections. All the guys down in Excellos were young white kids <laughs> playing, you know, <laughs> yow, yeah. yow, you know, that's like playing that groove, man. It was that, a swamp groove. Think about, yeah. like, the Beatles could never do, you know, shake your hips. They could never do hip shake boogie. It, would, it doesn't fit them. Oh, but it's do perfect. Hippie, hippie shake. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but yeah. playing Slim Harpo certainly no, fits the stuff. Because the, the dedication to the blues that really Brian. Yeah, it was Brian Jones. 
Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and by and the way, Stu, right? yeah, they, for, for everybody who yeah. thinks that ZZ Top, you know, came up with LaGrange and you didn't hear anything, do you mind playing a little Slim Harpo? Oh, uh, Slim Harpo, you doing? Play a little hip shake. Yeah, and it's fast. <laughs> yeah. Brand new dance, right? Going round. Everybody's doing it. From the grown up down. Did yeah. the hip shank, the stones could right. be great. Yeah. 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 yeah, and you look, look, now they didn't come full circle. They make it a blues record, and they're they talking about making another blues record now. But it's like, you know, you have nothing else to prove. And you go back, we all go back to the stuff that inspired us. Every musician I know. Yeah. If you if you <laughs> you go to anybody's dressing room and the people I know, you just mentioned some of the guys I know, Ronnie and them. The minute I walk in the dressing room, as loud as you can hear, Jimmy Reed. Go down to Keith Rizmo, loud yeah, as you can same hear. Same with Paige and Plant. Paige and <laughs> yeah. Plant carry their blues with them. And that's they go. how you get inspired. So, and they were bringing their cassettes over 20 years ago still. When yeah. people were listening to CDs, they still had like a suitcase full of cassettes show up <laughs> and put on their, their blues music. You know, that was precious to them. And you know, sure. I think the they, coolest thing about it yeah. is that, that they don't want that same thing that inspired them to get lost in this uh, world that we're living in that says the latest is the greatest. The latest doesn't, you know, it's great. I, I like to listen to somebody Adele's uh, uh, um, uh, 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 right. success, but I, I, I grew up in the same neighborhood with Eddie James and people like that. You know, they, they didn't have 15 producers. We didn't have no <laughs> auto-tunes. <laughs> I mean, seriously, they have auto-tunes on TV now. Right. You know, so, I mean, so it, it's it's a different thing but I, I, I can see why the, a lot of guys like now Jimmy Page or, or Keith and Mick or whoever, uh, or even much McCartney playing the blues with guys, you know, the, the, the legacy that they're leaving is great, but they also want to turn people on to the thing that turned them on. Exactly. You know? And, guys, when you come to B.B. King, September 6th, get your tickets, bbkings.com. Come tonight, see Joe Lewis Walker. There are no auto-tuning. <laughs> nobody is... Although we are no, too now. And no, then. nobody move. <laughs> nobody moves their mouth, and you hear songs coming out of a hard drive. Every sound you hear will be made on that stage by this list of amazing musicians. Jimmy's a music director. Jimmy Vivino, his buddy Will Lee playing bass. Uh, we got uh, Earl Gardner, Crispin Chow from uh, CO, yeah. CO from, on the horns. Uh, Leon Pendarvis playing key, Sean Pelton from Saturday Night Live on the drums. Leon, too. Leon's music director at Saturday Night Live. Yeah, that's right. He's that's right. Forever. Danny yeah. Lewis from mm -hmm. uh, from Government Mule. Danny Lewis is there. So here's just the lineup, and I think you're probably adding more. So Joe is going to be on this show. Sam Moore, Sam and Dave, William Bell, Dion, John Sebastian from The Love and Spoonful, Catherine Russell, man, she's just amazing, same as Shamika Copeland, Ruthie Foster, Scott Sherrard, Bill Sims, Eric Krasnow, Tosh Neal, King Solomon Hicks. You're going to have a night of blues and music like you'll never forget. It's real. People are going to sweat, and they're going to make you feel it in your soul. Don't miss this. Got tickets all this week for the 3 at 3 at Q1043, but you just have to find a way to get into the show. And, and speaking of uh, 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 Tosh Neal, do you guys play the London Souls up here much? You know that band? No. The London Souls. Everybody needs to get hip to the London Souls. Two cats here in New York. Tosh is has a partner. I can't remember his name, unfortunately. Sorry, forgive me. But Al Cooper turned me on to them because Al, Al has a thing he does called new music for old people <laughs> because we all complain. We're all like, oh, nobody's making any... Man, no... And Al will go sit there all day and find new music, meaning kids that are making music that that is the kind of music that was made in the 60s. Oh, no. There's more talent. There's oh, more yeah. talent in the room. Andrew, a producer Andrew who's People shooting. Zach, there's amazing real. talent. It's just that all that's wanted is a pretty face. And if you can't do anything, for the most part, it's just dance numbers. Are you cute? Or do you look right? It's well, like a casting thing. Everything good is underground. Now. Yeah. Right. But, you know, so now everybody's yeah. underground together. All right, so. so play us out with some good rock blues. Play us out with a good rock blues song. Nice. A little shaking all over.
Nice. You can't lose with the minor That's over the major. Yeah. <laughs> Same riff. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jimmy yeah, Vivino, Joe Lewis Walker, Joe's at BB Kings tonight. Jimmy's going to sit in. We'll see you there on September 6th. The Blues Foundation needs you. Rock and roll forever. New York's classic rock. Q1043.